On the 21st of February 1999, Sonna Selenpar came to the Albertin K2 shooting club and shot three people. In my eyes, Selenpar is nothing more than the most famous human rat of Solini in Isto's murder policy, which was staged for the brain research and medical use of the University of Turku. This activity shows what can be done in the Finnish business world in cooperation with the Finnish police and psychiatry, and what Sonna Selenpar's article strongly emphasizes. The case of Selenpar, which is no longer included in the series of motiveless and inexplicable murders in Finland, at least in my eyes, where psychiatry has revealed its own illegal actions with medical abuse drug treatments and manipulation that have remained on the side of statistical deviations all these years. The Finnish authorities who have taken on the task of staging and drugging these problem citizens with chemical compounds that decrease brain functions, with the approval of Solini Inisto, to the state mental hospitals for the studies of the University of Turku researchers Jarmo Hayatala and Walter Major Helena as natural resources for medicine and brain research with human rats to study the effect and reaction of various chemical compounds on the brains of these human rats. Sonna Selenpar's motiveless actions are no longer a rare phenomenon in modern Finland, 2020 but more of a basic assumption for problem citizens attracted to clinics that are the subject of positive advertising for psychiatry, who have been assumed to commit such acts that shock society, which Selenpar was also guilty of. This activity in Finland and Europe has given rise to a new minority group called the mentally ill, for whom acts that shock society like this are more likely than expected which gives great security to psychiatrists and other authorities who work in the background of these patients. Authority Cooperation Selen Pa, who worked at the time of the actions at the Fujitsu Finland Company, but who had previously worked at the Nokia Mobile Phone Company, which is the crown jewel of the Finnish state, whose reputation has clearly exceeded Selen Pa's human rights trampling on which is a normal activity for the Finnish president, Europe's new plague, the black death of problem citizens, double agent who defected on Kremlin's tables and the white king of the coalition Solini Inisto, what his agencies are doing with unprofitable citizens who are already being murdered in HUS medical care by disrupting vital functions, such as the post-trauma metabolic reaction in the case of Jimmy Cartunin to which the HUS medical care doctors give statements that, something very unexpected has happened in the case is systematic and systematic murder by the Finnish authorities in medical care. Those who cannot be killed in Finland are sent to the political backyard of the European Commission, Jutamama Africa Erpilainen, i.e. to African countries on the misleading orders of the Finnish arms manufacturer Patria where Tuomas Trasviuata was waiting for a bought kill. The white king of the coalition, Solini Inisto, who, as a graduate of the University of Turku, possesses the world's omniscience, wisdom and solutions to all the problems plaguing humanity and that is let's kill it, which is what has formed his own political path and career, which I call Solini Inisto's murder politics, whose victim Tuomas Trasviuari become in Uganda. Official cooperation in connection with the murder of Tuomas Trasviuari. It is unclear to me what Tuomas Trasviuari had done, that he was being murdered in Uganda until he was lured by a misleading commission from the Finnish arms manufacturer Patria, together with Suvi Linden, who is the main culprit of Trasviuari's murder and who had nothing to do officially in Uganda, so he has been watching and making sure that the ordered commission that is, the murder of Trasviuari is arranged. In connection with the murder of Trasviuari, the same reputation smearing campaigns were distributed as in connection with the murder of Jimmy Cartunin, on top of which HUS Hospital had also piled up violations of its own obligations with patients, such as leaving the patient alone and abusing medications that the hospital's psychiatry distributes with prescriptions to these problem citizens.
Any statements from the Ugandan side that serve to smear the reputation of the murdered Trisvuari cannot be used because it is completely biased and only serves to cover up Suvi Linden's actions. The official cooperation between the state authorities seems to be seamless in terms of how everyone washes their hands of responsibilities, which in the case of the Trisvuari murder meant the death investigation approved by THL Sirkagbala on the Ugandan side and the Central Criminal Police's Trohapala's approval of the criminal investigation conducted on the Ugandan side, which was full of evidence tampering, just like the death investigation. This action on the part of THL and the police has certainly been a big reason why the prosecutor's office does not start a criminal investigation, whose actions in the case of Finland do not affect other authorities at all, but on their menus are only our country's staged problem citizens who are driven to the human rat farms managed by the University of Turku for the illegal medical examinations of Jarmo Hayatala and Walter Major Helena into human rats with which they study the effects of various chemical compounds on the brain at the cellular level, speculate on the mechanisms of medically non-existent and imaginary disease, and refute previous guesses. Official Cooperation in the Case of Selen Pa The case of Selen Pa, where he has apparently stepped on the toes of the influential leaders of Nokia, the crown jewel of the Finnish state, by possibly quarrelling with them and who had good relations with the white king of the coalition Saulini Inisto, who was a rising star at the time, and in his wake there are many dead bodies lying around Nianisto's political field all of which have been covered up by accidents such as the death of Marjolina Nianisto. Just like in connection with the murder of Trisvuari, the signal for these cases comes from the middle of the circles where there are companies with strong connections to the state elite and as in the case of Trisvuari, the main author and supervisor of the murder was the ex-minister of the coalition Suvi Linden on whose side nothing but nominal interrogators who really do not lead nowhere but back to the free life. In these cases, it is essential to go to court with state-paid defense lawyers who make such statements about their clients through the media. Timon Yemi, who has mixed up his roles in the courts when he takes on the role of a judge, where can you say that Sona Selenpa has been nothing more than a nominal legal assistant who has looked after the state's interest and who tells about the level of corruption in Finland? To correct my above statement, so that it is not clear to anyone that I am biased towards Selenpa, the duty of a defense lawyer is to make sure that no one is convicted in Finland on false grounds or for acts that he has not committed. Selenpa who killed these innocents, did it under the influence of psychiatry's brain function lowering drugs, where the biased investigations of the state authorities on the part of the police have played a big role in the fact that the case goes as a mental hospital without blame, which in my opinion is quite a wrong verdict because psychiatry together with the police is in a large part that the case escalated to this because it it's quite a normal activity in modern Finland where the Police drags problem citizens even into school killing projects with the help of covert operations, which is completely the opposite of what the police textbooks read about its own activities, just like when it comes to covert operations whose purpose is to expose crimes and not drag problem citizens into them. The Role of the Police the role of the police in the Finnish cases that I investigate is at the very centre of the fact that the cases go through the courts in the state's favour, which means a place in a mental hospital and forced submission to the use of Turku University researchers Jarmo Hayatala and Walter Major Helena. The Finnish police whose activities are more like an organised criminal organisation that operates on the side of human trafficking. Literally when this whole is viewed from a medical point of view, where the merchandise is the health and freedom of our country's problem citizens, which are highly valued in the psychiatric side of medicine, with which it enables its own illegal medical research on people who have been medically abused non-existent and imaginary diseases in the name of which all illegal activities are made possible by medicine. 
unprofitable problem citizens for the state, whom medical psychiatry buys cheaply from our country's courts, but whose value to the relatives of the bystander victims, measured in terms of suffering, is priceless. Sending Selenpa to a mental hospital. The role of the police is at the center of the fact that they do not find a motive for the case, which is absolutely necessary for the absence of blame, where the perpetrator does not understand his actions, which, however, in the case of Selenpa, has meant being drugged by psychiatry in the courts, which even contributed to his being sent to a mental hospital as a medical human rat under the whim of Turku University researchers. Kari Tolvanen's work as a police officer was mainly corruption, where he did not want to interfere with the actions of other state authorities, such as psychiatry, which drugs these people who are to be removed from working life, from whom the state employees will receive their salaries, and part of his academic career from the medical psychiatry side, which has taken the preparation of these future human rats to be judged in court every unfortunately. It requires these human sacrifices, which were also victims of Selenpa. The police's false criminal investigation statement on the side of Jauni Kalpila. The Finnish police who have had to submit in the courts too many times to the dictatorship of Saulini Inisto, the white king of the coalition, which means completely unfounded and arbitrary rejections of the police's moderately good criminal investigations as in the case of Annie Lyora, where the courts rejected the police's criminal investigation statements in the face of concrete evidence, but decided to believe the 51 psychiatrists of Turku University Hospital with whose statements, Aura, who killed her husband, was convicted of sexually abusing her own children, which is certainly not believed by any professional in this field. This may have been part of the reason why the Finnish police have started to speak on behalf of the accused and by giving statements on their behalf about the motives of the accused and how the real motives of Kalpila's act were kept hidden from the public with the help of the media and the police, both of which are full of the likes of Hannah Pahaniemi, the former editor-in-chief of the Kalajoki regional newspaper and deputy member of the Council for Public Speaking and extremely radicalized temperament in which one can send even one's own relatives to these human rat farms for medical use just based on feelings. Jauni Kalpila, who burned the Yelivayaska church in front of all the unjust actions directed at him by the authorities, burned the church as revenge for these actions directed at him, which only sealed his place as a human rat of medicine who will nurture the academic careers of Jamo Hayatala and Walter Major Helena. If you look at the police statements that they released to the public about Kalpila's interviews, it is clearly noticeable how the police blame Kalpila for how difficult, awkward and burdensome his interview is. When it comes to a victim drugged by psychiatry who has been fed drugs that decrease brain function, the interview is not necessarily easy, but this is obviously the democracy that all decision makers chant in unison across party lines and which includes driving problem citizens together and with the power of the crowd University of Turku researchers Jamo Hayatala and Walter Major under Helena's whim and the human rats of medicine. Such interrogations were certainly quite normal in Nazi Germany which is only proof when I call the Finnish president Saulini Inisto the new plague of Europe the black death of problem citizens, the white king of the coalition and the new rise of the Aryans. I can also pledge my career as a crime journalist that the police's methods of working with these victims of psychiatry include a deliberate lack of understanding so that the motives of the cases remain in the dark, just like with Sona Selenpa, which is against all justice and an indication of the kind of cooperation the police as an authority has with other authorities when it takes these problem citizens into their own stone houses away from the free side of our society, in front of which the Finnish stupid group presents to the people their own hero capes, which include the fake kidnapping of Minna Nurminen relative of Cone Elevators and media mogul anti-Papra Herlin who engineered it, not because of money but the because of the corruption. 
This blessing which gave Minna Nurminen the strongest alibi you can have on earth, the victim status for her future crimes and it is a big question mark how much the world's richest Oyavara anti-Papa Herlin has dirty hands behind the scenes of these chases of problem citizens. Hold Mika Kiljala. When I was researching the Kalpila case and looking at the mental health unit of the Yelivayaksa Basic Service Corporation, I came across Marika Kiljala, the concubine of millionaire Mika Kiljala. Hult and Mika Kiljala are an extremely familiar company to me after working for this company during the years 2011 to 2013, where I was smoked out by Tommy Manurjoki, Ari Ratainen and Nico Koselainen, and finally I was threatened that they were going to make it difficult for me to get a job which unfortunately has been true Kohataru Latin Meki and Sweko by Henry Necht. The name of millionaire Mika's concubine Marika Kiljala has of course disappeared from Calio's pages by 06 forward slash 2023, but that does not mean that she does not work in this field in one way or another behind the fake it's where this illegal activity of psychiatry affects whose core task is to make these disadvantaged citizens like Jauni Kalpila the human rats of medicine. There is a big question mark from where these actions are taken, from the business world or from the medical care side, what the managers of the company in Kiljala do in smoking out unwanted employees. Hold Mika Kiljala together in staging the kidnapping of a relative of media mogul Papa Herlin the unwanted parliamentary candidate of the coalition murdered with the help of arms manufacturer Patria, Tuomas Trisviuari and Sona Selenpa are already a pretty tough show together, where the new plague of Europe, the black death of problem citizens, the double agent who defected to the Kremlin's tables, the white king of the coalition and the new rise of the Aryans in Finland led by Sauli. Nianisto can be done with the help of the disinformation of YLE, the propaganda machine of the authorities and the state. Green in the diagram shows cases where the corporate world has been in strong cooperation with the police and psychiatry when it is sending problem citizens either prematurely to the grave or to state mental hospitals in the name of medically non-existent and imaginary diseases, of course. In the graph, Red shows cases where psychiatry has worked only in cooperation with the police without the business world, which only means that these actions are used by both when problem citizens have to be removed from the free side of society to the state's stone houses as a basis for medical and other authorities' salary payments. Undercover police activity to attract criminal activity. The Finnish police who have used covert operations to lure our country's problem citizens into criminal activities, together with the case of Sona Selenpa, tells what their role is behind the fake hits whose surface is artificial hero stories about the authority whose task is law enforcement. Kalhajaki School Massacre If there were no Finnish police and psychiatry, there would be no society shaking acts in Finland which are the result of the cooperation of these two, where these drugged problem citizens are drawn into these school massacre projects, such as the Jokla and Kalhajaki cases, where the biggest culprit was the police and the avoidance of its responsibilities, which seemed to be a very basic policy where the bureaucracy evading all obligations and which it could not have done except with the approval of an homeland, the former minister of the interior of the coalition who was the project manager of these school murders and a true supporter of the coalition's murder policy, who has made Solini Inisto, the white king of the coalition, happy because such hatred of the people could not be bought other than Andreas Lubitz's plane accident. The school massacre in Kalhajaki, which took place within about a year, has revealed 100% the real role of the police in society and the coalition's murder policy in cooperation with psychiatry, which feeds these problem citizens with drugs that lower brain functions under which these school massacres are carried out, just like the ones committed by Sona Selenpa, because I don't see that any person would be capable of these school massacres without drugged by psychiatry. 
when the Finnish police hand out such outrageous brain farts to a near terrorist who they couldn't get his gun away, it tells more about the fact that psychiatry had done a hard job with Matty Sara, that it had managed to raise Sara's state of mind to the level that he copes with the school massacre and not this hard work of psychiatry police did not want it to scrap on the side of the police, by taking away Sara's gun. The police who work with psychiatry nowadays, are in trouble when they chase problem citizens into their own stone houses, some of whom become human rats in medicine. Several other police officers feared the worst, if only there wasn't another jokler. It appears from the preliminary investigation minutes of the trial regarding the gun license decisions that preceded Kalhajaki's school massacre that several Kalhajaki policemen sensed Mati Sarai's unfitness to carry a gun. They would have liked to take this gun away, but now the accused inspector prevented it. The first attempt was made on Friday, the 19th of September. The accused inspector was not at work at the time but Sainajoki's deputy police chief Vesa Nairinen was responsible for the pool, he decided that the gun should be taken away from Sarai. The resemblance to the Jokla school killer Pekka Eric Orfees was so clear. A couple of weeks earlier, Sarah had already been noticed by a senior constable who had inspected Sarah's gun. I hope the guy is not the next school shooter, the constable had already told his colleague at the time. When Sarai's online material was found, several constables were of the opinion that the gun should be retrieved. In a coffee room discussion, a common decision was reached that such a man does not need a gun, but we will get it away, one constable described. Two patrols in bulletproof vests and with Nirenan's permission went to Sarai's apartment, but Sarai was not at home. Nirenan decided that it is tactically wisest to wait for Sarai to return home, so that he does not find out that the police are looking for his weapon. On Saturday, 20 September, the accused inspector was at his colleague's wedding party in Kurika. There were plenty of other Kalhajaki policemen there as well. The chief constable who led Friday's raid asked the police station for permission to go to Sarai's apartment again on Sunday. The commissioner refused. He said he would talk to Sarai himself on Monday. The chief constable exchanged a few words about the inspector's decision with another policeman. He commented on the decision that there would be no new jokler. On Monday, the 22nd of September, the inspector met Sara. This one got to keep his gun. On Tuesday, the 23rd of September, Sara killed 10 victims and himself at Kalhajaki Vocational School. The chief constable was at home in the morning when Nirenan called to ask if the gun had not been retrieved. He replied that the inspector had not given permission. A no ni cope. This same avoidance of responsibilities by letting the murderer go free to commit murders can be seen with a no copy when the security director of the HUS Hospital District noticed that the suspicious deaths in the HUS Hospital were connected to a no cope. Even if HUS, as such a large public actor, could have prevented the numerous murders in Nicopy, it does not do so and explains this with all kinds of almost bureaucratic actions because these dead people simply do not mean anything to Finnish healthcare and decision makers who with the help of the dancing baby of the Finnish politics and the, the hyena of the social democratic sonomis Vogmerin who poses with the double murders legislate care dimensioning laws in parliament about Sorley. Nianisto's wishes which can bring down elderly services with the self-inflicted labor shortage created by Mikhail Lilius, which is now closing elderly services like he did with the case Fortum in the beginning of year 2000, sorely Nianisto's wishes of course. These murders done by the NICOP brought more public trust away from healthcare in general and how such cases are always made by individual wolves and which are not the general operating procedure of the medical care that these institutions perform, which in micromenal investigations, however, 
shows the complete opposite and how the medical care commits murders with the help of HUS medical care doctors when it comes to a problem citizen expensive to the state like Jimmy Cartunin. Letting Nycope run away at this point would not be expensive from the state forward slash medical care point of view, because Nycope murdered the elderly who wasted taxpayers' money, just like Cartunin, who was eliminated by HUS doctors. Gerianio's drug trade run from the police headquarters. In the face of these cases, the drug trade led from Gerianio's police headquarters has been more of an activity desired by the decision makers, with the help of which problem citizens are staged in the state's stone houses, in graves or in the human rat farms of the University of Turku as natural resources for medicine. Arneo's drug trade must have been difficult to refuse a problem citizen from whom the National Pension Institute takes away basic income support and the labor market is under the control of Finland's richest Oyavara media mogul anti Papa Herlin, whose power cannot be questioned when he even stages the kidnappings of his own brats, whose tax money the Finnish police have no choice but to participate in Papa Herlin's staging activities which the Finnish police would certainly do for free. Based on their activities behind the fake hits, which beat traditional human trafficking to the ground. Gerianio's Drug Store, which has been used to organize drugs for problem citizens, who are forcibly taken as medical human rats after the side effects of the drugs start and who join Arneo's distribution network is arrested in connection with a large deal and dozens of years of drug dealing sentences are read out on the side of problem citizens from whom the Finnish state has taken away basic income support with the help of the laws of a democratic state, which Gerianio was creating. Official decisions to protect his own illegal activities as the head of the drug unit. The Finnish state, which only offers illegal work on the part of the police, which leads 100% to the state's stone houses, because the whole operation is run by the police, the center of which is to draw problem citizens into criminal activities, where their poor social status is exploited, which is made worse by the dictator-like laws of the state, which can completely cancel the income support of these citizens arbitrarily. Based on this, it would seem that the hospital psychiatrist has taken over the drug trade run by Gerianio, which it does with the support of democratic laws by writing these problem citizens with a prescription for these drugs distributed by Gerianio directly from the pharmaceutical industry's assembly line, where these Arneo's drugs apparently also came from through a few middlemen and which is certainly well covered up because no problem citizen who needs a degree in chemistry can make. These tough chemical compounds, it doesn't matter if the television shows one of the other state propaganda about drug dealers and manufacturers with doctorate degrees who only create a false image for the people of where these laboratory-made conversion drugs actually come from. Mikhail Runeberg And what comes to Gerianio's right-hand man, Mikhail Runeberg? who links state propaganda on Twitter just like the YLES propagandan journalist Jessica Aro, as private persons, of course, which is mostly the way of the authorities, when for example Jesper Ekelund, who is well known to me from the human rat side of medicine, also does lobbying on Twitter as a private person. Runeberg who does his work as good just like other government officials that I was absolutely sure that he works at YLE, just like Charles Atukuri, who sang about YLE's propaganda machine almost identically in connection with the murder of Tuomas Trisviuari. After researching Runeberg's background, he has moved back to government work, this time to the Aurora Psychiatric Hospital to deceive these drug trafficking victims the responsibility of which has been transferred to psychiatry, so Runeberg's livelihood has not even changed much when he moved from the police drug unit to psychiatric clinics, which means Gerianio's drug trafficking with new clothes and bigger shoulders. Runeberg's job in the psychiatric department proves his relations with the state and the illegal activities carried out in its name with the problem citizens of our country 
which includes the human rat business carried out by the University of Turku with these problem citizens whose recruitment is cheap when measured in terms of money, but priceless in terms of suffering for the families of bystander victims who died at the hands of these problem citizens, which they take as a last resort in. The midst of trouble when the Finnish authorities have attacked them with the help of the laws of a democratic state, the basic purpose of which is to subjugate these citizens as human rats for medicine for the use of Jarmo Hayatala and Walter Major Helena of the University of Turku. Runebird's career choice has certainly had many recommenders from the highest management of our country because it is certainly difficult to find employees for these state institutions such as psychiatric clinics, who will keep their mouths shut in the face of all the illegal activities such as medical abuse and staging, which these institutions are forced to do in front of the human rat business that offers career opportunities for the rising stars of the University of Turku, like Walter. Major Helena, just as Nazi Germany offered a career opportunity to Joseph Mengel at the expense of the health and freedom of the Jews and just as Mengel did not refuse to use these human poles in his own medical fantasies, which included sewing babies together, Walter Major Helena of the University of Turku cannot refuse her own illegal research either with the staged problem citizens of our country, when the Balance Cup has his own academic career, which he is pursuing in the name of the omnipotence of the University of Turku. Does Runeberg make any sense at all? Runeberg, who still links state propaganda in the Finnish media, where his former partner in crime Kalevi Puanti currently has an influence, i.e. MTV3 News, tells about the relations of the Finnish authorities, but now to the point. Runeberg who says, After 1995, he has not conducted a single police investigation solely related to use. I realized the absurdity of it. The problem will not go away with punishments, thinks Runeberg. He has been of this opinion for decades. Punishment must have some social impact, and here it is ineffective. It's about those in a weaker position in society anyway. These statements by Runeberg encapsulate the complete absurdity of the entire Finnish police and when it has come face to face with this absurdity, their knob has simply gone haywire which has resulted in them becoming Finland's largest umbrella organization of organized crime, which means from the police's side that they have begun to bless medical care accidents criminal investigations of murdered problem citizens for the benefit of the state, where the credibility of this institution in the eyes of the people is utilized in a maximum way by dragging the criminal investigations of unwanted parliamentary candidates murdered by the decision makers under the table, like Tuomas Trusvuaran. The fact is that our society has almost completely eliminated crime, and there is really no use for the police in Finland, whose task, according to Runeberg's statements, is to fine and punish our problem citizens for their own pathetic lives which is very close to the murderous policy of Saulini Inisto, the white king of the coalition, and the reason why the police has exchanged, perhaps even under their own eyes the immoral work of them for the immoral work of the state's decision makers. Where, however, you get James Bond-esque action when joint forces organize assassinations in the name of democracy, of course, if necessary even as far as Uganda where the misleading orders of the arms manufacturer Patria play a large role and is a sign that the prosecutor's office does not don't even light up when it comes to crimes committed by decision makers. This activity, which Runeberg is talking about, tells about our society, how these services, which are advertised to the people like Christmas all year round and where the money goes in sacks, has left me wondering where this money disappears and it can't disappear to anything other than some people sitting behind desks or that is directed to tax haven accounts in the names of state decision makers, where it can be used without the approval of the people. 
This activity is supported by the fact that these problem citizens are not helped and that Gerionio's task was to make sure that there are drugs in the country that are distributed to these problem citizens, which will take them to their graves prematurely because it is so difficult to help them, so it is easier to organize an environment for them where they can to commit suicide by the police. It is quite clear that this industry would require a complete overhaul and the abolition of the police, who has become Finland's largest umbrella organization of organized crime, whose business includes cleaning up the murders committed in decision-making positions and in the corporate world, and sweeping cases under the carpet, as happened with Mikko Alanen, and sending problem citizens to the state mental hospital as medical human rats for the police's false criminal investigation statements. With help, as in the case of Jauni Kaupila. Police and Psychiatry Cooperation A man broke into a psychiatric hospital and fled the police at a shocking speed with a patient in Salo last February. The man had broken the safety glass of the Halako Psychiatric Hospital's front door with an axe and entered. The man was able to lure a woman who was being treated in the hospital with him. The woman got into the man's car, and the two drove away. The man threatened to blow up social workers. He had also threatened two employees of the municipality's social services with an explosion and he also threatened to drive a motorcycle through the glass wall of the Nantali town hall. The actions were related to the officials' decisions towards the man's family. In addition, the man had run away from the police patrol while they were escorting and guarding him at Turku University Hospital. When the man was put in the police car, he had put his feet down and ran for about 200 meters before he was caught got a suspended sentence. It appears from the verdict that the man had failed to use all the medicines prescribed to him and had been using intoxicants. He had no previous criminal record. The man, born in 1995, was eventually convicted of causing damage, grossly endangering traffic safety, the crime of using a narcotic substance, assaulting the police, illegal threats violently resisting an official, and escaping a prisoner. He received a total of six months of suspended imprisonment for his actions. The man was also charged with aggravated deprivation of liberty for taking a woman who was under treatment against her will, but the court dismissed the charge. The police who have literally butted heads with psychiatry when it puts mental pressure on the necks of the isolated citizens of our society and the victims of psychiatry's human trafficking through the news, where it advertises its own lists with thousands of people with mental health problems, which means, together with the actions of the police, which includes Gestapo methods with problem citizens who should to be possible only in North Korea is now in use in Finland. The Europe's New Plague. The Black Death of Problem Citizens, the double agent who defected to the Kremlin's tables, the White King of the Coalition and the new rise of the Aryans in Solini in Istoes Kingdom, which is in reality the Fourth Kingdom, which suits Germany's new propaganda minister Ursula von der Leyen who spreads baseless lies and disinformation about the functioning of the European Union's sanctions on Russia and how they have to resort to semiconductor technology stolen from washing machines on war. France is, to say the least, Donald Trump. All the cases combined in Finland. The conclusions can clearly be drawn from them that the main task of the Finnish police is to make these criminals problem citizens of our country in one way or another, where the illegal and criminal actions of the police are covered with fakeheads painted with the loss of freedom and health of citizens who are staged and led to commit crimes. Press conferences where the police appear in their heroes' capes which were made by Thai refugees from the Helsinki Rock Sauna business led by Kenneth Erickson in the basements of the police headquarters, from which Gerionio's drug business is also derived. Activities of Psychiatry The operation of psychiatry, just like their glorified desire to help, which in reality is the abuse of medicine, 
medicinal torture in strapping chairs and being a human rat of medicine which is supposed to cure these problems citizens but which in reality are torture methods together with the brain-destroying electrotherapy that was used by Joseph Mengele in Auschwitz. These illegal activities have been reintroduced in Finland by the University of Turku as forms of treatment that they use by destroying the electrochemical connections of problem citizens staged in the courts, in other words, destroying their brain functions, in the name of which the patients are studied exactly what these Turku University researchers Jarmo Hayatala and Walter Major Helena want to study for their own academic careers of course and for which one can always blame these human rats of medicine and their imaginary disease, in the name of which patients' stories about their treatment are put, delusions of course. This false activity of the University of Turku with medically invisible and imaginary diseases is advertised by Wiley's propaganda machine like Christmas throughout the year so that the people will believe it, just like the witch hunt in the Middle Ages. The activities of psychiatry may not have been visible in the 21st century due to its little coverage, but in modern Finland it is advertised like Christmas all year round, lobbied by Jerechik Tayonen, which only reveals the real face of this rapper when he advertises these medically non-existent and imaginary diseases, in the name of which researchers from the University of Turku. Jarmo Hayatala and Walter Major Helena conduct illegal human medical experiments on these medical victims and human rats that they recruit from Nuveniami led by Kari Ohala for the TEPS research, said on page 5. In the cases of problem citizens who have strayed into these psychiatric clinics, their reactions to the treatment of an imaginary disease are completely different than one might expect and how these victims mix up in these clinics through a very long formula, taking bystander victims as they go in front of this dictatorship that has attacked them from the authorities. Victims of Psychiatry Sonacelan Pa, who, like all victims of psychiatry, was led to believe that they must eat harsh chemical compounds for fall depression which are actually drugs that lower brain functions, under which almost all victims of psychiatry commit an act that shocks society. It buys its own victims with its own expert opinions for the human rat business side of mental hospital medicine for the use of Jarmo Hayatala and Walter Major Helena. Provoking and leading to actions is a necessary evil for this activity and it is sad for the relatives of bystander victims such as the parents of Emilia Nyeminen, whose daughter was killed on the Savio basketball court by a citizen who was victimized by psychiatry and other Finnish authorities. The way psychiatry can do this is because their own biased expert statements about their own patients and at the same time their victims are so highly valued in the corrupt courts of our country as far as the statements of other authorities are concerned that it is already approaching 100% dictatorship and it is with these patients who are in a completely defenseless position in front of these state institutions in the courts where their word is nothing but air. With these biased and own expert opinions, it is extremely safe to go to the courts as another authority when these victims of psychiatry are defended by a state-paid defense attorney, which in Finland culminates at least in Heike Lampella. Kyle Gummerus and Kari Uoti, the latter of whom has been sitting in the state's stone house for seven years, is now turning heads in the courtrooms. This biased action is at least the rule rather than the exception in our country's courts, just like the action of the Finnish police, which distributes biased criminal investigation statements like a conveyor belt to problem citizens which at worst means problem citizens lured into crimes with the help of a cover-up operation who unjustifiably eat the money of Saulini Inisto, the white king of the coalition, who has already started to be murdered in Finnish medical care with the help of accidents and bad treatment, which resulted in Jimmy Cartunin's death. Andreas Lubitz There is proof of psychiatry that works without restrictions from national borders 
the glue that holds it together is the academic careers of researchers such as Jarmo Hayatala and Walter Major Helena from the University of Turku. The university world, which is interconnected without national borders, is practicing this illegal activity worldwide with staged problem citizens, with the help of which it advances medicine at the expense of the freedom and health of these staged citizens www.pronya.eu Where the University of Turku was involved like many other European universities led by the German LMU Munich and its Nikolaus Kaut Solaris. This field, just like the University of Turku, is completely dependent on these imaginary diseases whose credibility Lubitz's plane crash all boils down to, just like all the witches burned at the stake in the Middle Ages. When the University of Turku sends its own researchers such as Lorai Tuominen to Ottawa to study schizophrenia, it is more proof for me that this Canadian university has at least adopted the illegal medical studies conducted by the University of Turku on people, which are carried out in the name of medically non-existent and imaginary diseases. Lubitz, like all the cases in Finland, are lured to psychiatric clinics in the hope of a better life but where they are fed harsh chemical compounds that destroy the human nervous and immune system in the name of imaginary diseases, which all end in an act that shocks society, not by the patient's desire, but by psychiatric professionals who prepare these victims of medicine for these acts by provocation and with the help of lies, just like Sona Selenpar and in other cases like Jauni. Kaupila who burned the Yelivayaska church in revenge for this unfair action that was directed at him by the authorities, in which case he was buried in a state mental hospital with a false criminal investigation statement by the Finnish police that went through the courts while Kaupila was drugged, where he has a biased legal assistant paid by the state. Lubitz's case, however, is the most similar to the Kalhajaki school shooting and Tuomas Trisviuari's murder of my cases, in terms of companies that are in high positions in government decision makers, which in Trisviuari's case was represented by the arms manufacturer Patria and in Lubitz's case by Lufthansa's subsidiary German Wings. These cases are connected by the childish explanations of the authorities and leaders in leading positions who could have prevented these cases, which are justified by bureaucracy and the lack of laws to be able to intervene in these cases. These explanations for so many cases have revealed the murderous policy of state decision-makers, especially in Finland, which is led by Europe's new plague, the Black Death of Problem Citizens a double agent who defected to the Kremlin, the White King of the Coalition and the new rise of the Aryan Solinianisto which is a graduate of the University of Turku, which, as a university, is known for the misuse of medicine and illegal medical research on the staged problem citizens of our country, on whom medically non-existent and imaginary diseases have been imposed, in the name of which these medical illegalities are made possible. Just like the school shooting in Kalhajaki, which would have been 100% preventable by the police taking away Mati Sara's gun, which, however, could not be done according to the law, which, having investigated these cases, always serves as an excuse for decision makers and high officials when they pursue their own goals either by blaming these laws, as in the case of Kalhajaki or by justifying his own illegal actions as in the case of Jauni Kalpila, who burned the Yelivayaska church, when he was fed harsh chemical compounds in the name of an imaginary disease, together with unjust actions provoked by him, he burned down the Yelivayaska church in revenge for the actions of the authorities. The Kalhajaki school massacre and Andreas Lubitz's plane crash could have been prevented many times if it had been wanted but they were not done because these accidents have actually been the desired outcome of the decision makers, with which they grow popular hatred towards this new minority group, i.e. towards persons suffering from mental health problems, leaving them completely at the mercy of the dictatorship of the state authorities, which are accepted with popular hatred towards this. 
group characterized by these school killings and plane crashes. These drug courses that were prescribed to Lubitz only brought him ever closer to an act that shocked society and the destruction of his own nervous and immune system, which escalates with almost every patient to an act that shocks society, maybe even in revenge for what psychiatry does with these patients, exploiting their lack of understanding in the face of these harsh chemical compounds. Baby Death in Kyopio In terms of psychiatry, Lubitz's case corresponds to the infant deaths in Kyopio and Tampur, where a mother of two children from Kyopio was admitted to psychiatric care due to postpartum depression, from which she killed her own offspring when she was lured by her husband to watch a hockey game at the ice rink. This killing was also done under the influence of psychiatric drugs, just like Lubitz's plane crash. This woman has been in psychiatric treatment near the new Veniami of Kyopio, which is led by the coalition's municipal politician Kari Ohala, who as a parliamentary party murders its own unwanted MP candidates in the political backyard of the European Commission Jutta Erpilainen in the African countries, to which these victims of the coalition's murder policy are lured by the misleading orders of the godless arms manufacturer Patria, means, in my eyes that even these baby deaths are the systematic result of the coalition's murder policy, which is led by Europe's new plague, the black death of problem citizens, the double agent who defected to the Kremlin's tables, the coalition's white king and the new rise of the Aryan Solinianisto. The causes of these baby deaths goes 100% to the fault of these mothers, in my opinion, unjustifiably from which the coalition's murder policy completely washes its hands, which is of course wrong than Solinianisto's mind, with which the problem citizens of our country are blamed completely without grounds, but which is due to the white king of the coalition, Solinianisto. Baby death in Tampur The baby death in Tampur is a bit similar, in that the news coverage does not read about the operation of psychiatry. But if you look at the Kyopio case, what the mother did immediately after being released from psychiatric treatment, i.e. killed her own offspring, it is clear that this mother in Tampa has also been to these psychiatric clinics where their reputation is tarnished in future trials. Drugs that lower brain functions are given and in the case of Tampa, she is unjustifiably accused of harming the child, which seems to have been the trigger for the baby's death which she was only able to do under the influence of psychiatry, just like all the school killings in Finland and the Lubitz plane accident, because no one can survive such acts without drugs. It is quite clear to me that these women cannot survive anymore without being drugged with drugs that reduce brain function after these acts, which of course makes them extremely agreeable to all medical experiments done by the Turku University researcher Walter Major Helena and where the false promises are made for their mental suffering, which only tells about the crimes of medical psychiatry against humanity and the leadership of this area. Han Yu Laoma and Kari Ohala's ruthlessness towards his own kind, which already compares to Nazi leaders, both of whom are much closer to mental illness than any of the drugged victims of psychiatry condemned in the media. Psychiatry that spares no means when seeking credibility in the eyes of the people for their own medically non-existent diseases without caring about bystander victims. The hatred of the people that is being cultivated towards these victims of psychiatry is necessary, with the help of which medicine justifies its own illegal research on people whose necks have been nailed by the shocking actions of these victims of psychiatry, because these illegal human experiments on the brain research side cannot be made possible by anything other than massive public hatred. These baby deaths are the truth where medical care is being taken with the coalition's murder policy, whose supporters include the media mogul anti Papa Herlin, definitely for machinating the kidnapping of his own relative Minna Nerminen, together with his statements on MTV3 News where he declares in a doomsday voice, how to get these problem citizens treatment that seems to be medical abuse, 
mother of families drugging and leading them to these shocking acts, if necessary even with the help of the Finnish police. The hospital industry that is being built under the leadership of Papa Herlin and the White King of the Coalition, Mikhail Lilius, who has no pity for people when there is money in the balance, just like none of the capitalists of this group, for whom money plays the same role as the Aryan race for the Nazis. Having investigated these cases, it would not be at all excluded that in the case of Andreas Lubitz, Advice was sought from the coalition's murder policy, which includes the media mogul anti Papa Herlini together with the fake kidnapping of his own relative Minna Nerminen, and the medical giant Mihailanen Lilius, who seems to be reorganizing Finnish medical care from services and with this Finnish non of desired citizens, just as happened with Tuomas Trasviuari. My desire to meet Jauni Kaupila 2020 because these cases have raised so many doubts about the illegal actions of the authorities in my eyes, where these citizens appear as innocent victims of the illegal actions of psychiatry and Solini Inisto's murder policy, from which even newborn babies are not protected, as was clearly seen from the previous cases and how psychiatry takes full advantage of these innocent babies and of mothers whom it has successfully induced to murder their own offspring drugged and manipulated by the psychiatrist, just like Andreas Lubitz flew the plane into the mountain wall drugged and manipulated by the psychiatrist. I have contacted VTH director Han Yu Laoma about my desire to interview Jauni Kaupila, whom the court heard from Laoma's prison mental hospital, which would seem to be quite normal behavior with these victims of psychiatry who have been unfoundedly accused of imaginary diseases, that they are heard from a prison mental hospital where they can be drugged very strongly in the name of an imaginary disease only to show them in an extremely confused and completely illegitimate state, which would seem to be the arbitrariness and injustice of the justice system owned by Minister of Justice Anamaya Henriksen and Saulini Inisto, which is dressed in the cloak of democracy just like Hitler dressed his illegalities under National Socialism. You can clearly see from the emails how the above laws for these patients are just a blur when it comes to visitation rights, for example, and these patient meetings are not actually made possible, for example, because of my desire to meet Kalpila and ask about the real motives for burning the Yelivayska church, how the Finnish authorities have acted in Kalpila's case and what his life is like in these states in institutions owned and managed by Han Yu Laoma, which in my criminal investigations against humanity look like medical concentration camps, whose patients appear in the illegal medical studies of the University of Turku researchers Jarmo Hayatala and Walter Major Helena, where they have studied the effect of various chemical compounds with citizens subjected to forced treatment at the cellular level with state-of-the-art medical equipment, predicting the medically non-existent and imaginary mechanisms of the disease's origin as well as overturn previous guesses, which in the eyes of a former product development engineer is indeed quite a search shot at the expense of the health and freedom of these patients who are problem citizens deliberately provoked into actions only because of the human rat business of the University of Turku, whose price to the relatives of the bystander victims of the staged patients is priceless in terms of suffering. The cooperation regarding messages with Han Yu Lauerman, Minister of Justice Anamaya Henriksen and Minister of the Interior Maria Ohizalo was mostly evasive non-responsiveness which only proves that the activities of these institutions certainly do not stand the light of day and is certainly the main reason why they do not cooperate with me. Me, according to my information, you have a person named Jauni Kalpila in the prison mental hospital. I would have inquired about visiting times when I could meet this person. The person doesn't know me from before but I would assume that the visit could be a positive addition in addition to possible nursing facility routines. Saturdays would suit me best and I would be willing to meet this person every Saturday for a maximum of two months, but less could be enough. 
There is certainly no reason why meetings would not be possible, so I would like to thank you in advance. Marie Lakeso, unfortunately, due to the obligation of confidentiality, we cannot comment on who we are treating. We do not have general visiting hours, but the patients themselves invite their guests to a separately arranged appointment. Weekly meetings are possible. Me, well. You keep the guys in strict isolation there. An external, independent operator cannot even accurately determine how people are treated there. Independent actor now means me, because I don't think that for example Major Walter, the doctor of psychiatry who blackmailed me, and her gang would in any way intervene in the grievances that you may have towards these people, including the rehabilitation that these people get there. I don't have the authority, but I'm running after the evidence here, and I have a strong belief that this institution of yours could find evidence for my treatment. I hope they are not so isolated there that you can feed whatever mental images to those patients when they are not in contact with anyone, other than these mind-altering doctors. After five years of medicinal rehabilitation, treatment and discharge, it's good to say and show. See for yourself, these patients are crazy. Han Yu Laoma, briefly for your information, we are under the strict supervision of several authorities, and every patient has the right to file complaints and grievances, which are properly handled by external bodies. The average length of the treatment period at PVS is about a month, and the anonymously collected feedback from our patients has been very good. Me. Apparently, you have the supervision of several authorities, but now it's about how well they do their job, what the inspection process includes and who does it. Jerry Arniel also had superiors whose task would have been to prevent the drug trade run from the drug unit in Helsinki, and it was not a button trade, but drugs were imported by barrel trade from across the border. At the same time. The police of the year staged competing drug dealers in prison as innocents to cover up their own actions, and their own friends club defended and protected their loyal leader. The person, as an authority serving the law, crossed his fingers when one competitor was murdered out of the drug business, that he could bring even one more barrel of stuff to the neighbor's owner. If this kind of activity is possible in the police, what can be done in the medical care and personal experience proves that it is possible to stage a working engineer for medical forced treatment with real fake doctors in the background, a treatment where not even the Norwegian Brevik was put. Your belief in the supervision of various authorities does not gain my trust, unless I myself get to meet a person in your institution. With an interview lasting several days. I would be able to ascertain what this person's condition is and whether there can be found in the background wrong medication and staged patient meetings, etc. This is a meeting and related discussion, which the person can block if necessary if he does not like my company. Since you have such a strong need to prevent these meetings when I myself would only like to come and partially check the situation. It only increases the validity of my suspicions about these witch-hunting mental illnesses that this institution specializes in. What happened in Yelivayska when the church burned? Is it a hate and revenge crime for the treatment this person received in the Yelivayska unit, which has been painted with the help of half-false patient reports as the unpredictable act of a mental health patient in need of medication? who cannot explain his actions partly due to the effects of medication. And if you have patients there, for whom the position of the pen means a death sentence, from what I've read in the news, it says quite a lot about the treatment you can possibly receive in that institution. To you, this seems to be psychiatric treatment, but to me it seems that one of your nurses has scared the patient and at the same time brought that pencil gesture with him during the scare, I can't say exactly how that pencil gesture can be taught to a certain fear when this field of psychology is really a foreign area to me but there is some injustice in the treatment. Such a pen gesture in itself means nothing here outside your institution, 
in normal life. On the other hand, what would child welfare say if there was a child in daycare who was afraid of death based on the position of the pen? I would guess that they would look for the reason in the family circumstances, but in the institution in Turku they would focus on looking for the reason in the person. Passy and Reinbeth investigated Arneo's actions because their actions showed abuses, and I investigated cases of medical care where I saw abuses. I would also like to remind you that personal abuse in medical care is the background of my contacts and I will find out how extensive it could possibly be. Unfortunately, I've had to notice that the only people who could have been subjected to this kind of abuse are already behind locked doors or dead, and I'm not surprised at all. I'm not defending the actions of the people in the institutions, who you have there in Turku but I'm pointing out possible abuses and stagings that have led to the actions of these people by doctors on duty who don't follow patient rights and good medical ethics. So while waiting for visitation rights. Han Yu Laoma, more briefly, our hospital has no long-term patients at all. If I understood correctly, you would like to meet someone who may have been here a long time ago. Me, briefly. I would like to meet a person named Jauni Kalpila, because as a private person I am investigating medical treatment abuses and staging mental illnesses that lack a medical basis. These diseases are therefore imposed on people partly on the basis of their behavior, which directly encourages diagnosis if it is a person who is an outcast from society who is wanted out of normal life. So, in practice, any healthy person can be staged for these which like diseases when you go to the wrong psychiatrist who starts writing his own view of the person. At worst, people diagnosed with the most serious mental illnesses can become guinea pigs for drug development by pharmaceutical researchers against their will when these mental illnesses that have no medical basis are researched and developed. This is my reason for investigating these cases. My suspicions only arise regarding abuse because these people who have been diagnosed with a mental illness in a prison mental hospital are kept in strict isolation and are in contact only with friends club doctors who have a certain idea. With the idea that there can be for example when a person has received a certain kind of sentence, which partly shocks our society, then this patient will be deprived of all civil rights in these institutions and their treatment will also be the same. According to my information, Jauni Kalpila would be in the psychiatric prison hospital in Turku according to the news, but since Han Yu Laoma said that they do not have long-term patients and I hope that he is not directly lying to me to prevent the meeting, I have no choice but to believe him. I hope that the doctors of the different mental hospitals who received the email in whose hospital this person could be, would contact me because I would like to meet and talk with this person. The transparency of the actions of the authorities is proclaimed throughout the country, but apparently we have institutions in the country where this declaration cannot reach, and it remains to be seen whether it reaches civil rights as well. Although Laoma's facility is under the supervision of several authorities, it is not an inspection if one authority visits for an hour every two years. In order to check the long-term operation and development of an institution like this, it would be necessary to place an authority in this institution every day for at least a year to see where the managers of these institutions have developed these places and how patients are treated, on what basis drugs are pumped into these patients and how it happens. Well. Coercion is obviously not very nice the vision can be and this law is on, it is only up to the doctor's imagination what is fed to. The patient. Hourly visits tell nothing. Waiting for the meeting. This meeting was not organized even though the messages included the Minister of Justice Anamaya Henriksen and the Minister of the Interior Maria Ohizalo which only tells me that my suspicions are correct in the light of the incidents that happened in Finland, because there is almost no cooperation with me except cold disputes from Laoma's side, 
which I am very familiar with here on the part of Oli Isitalo, Suvi Linden and Gerianio, and if Dr. Oyavara starts imitating with me these puppets of the state's decision makers, while others, including the Minister of Justice and the Minister of the Interior, are playing tricks, the charges from my side are ready. Second attempt to meet Calpilla 2022. I tried to contact you again in 2022 regarding these patient interviews, but this time I was not answered at all, which is to be expected because I do not know any criminal organization that would allow impartial inspectors into their facilities where extreme illegality is carried out against people who have been subjected to the laws of a democratic state as human rats for medicine in Turku for use by university researchers such as Walter Major Helena. Me, I still want those interviews just like I did about two years ago. This time the Minister of Justice Anamaya Henriksen, the Prime Minister Sonamerin and the President of the Republic Saulini Inisto are organizing them for me with the persons I will name and who are locked up in our country's prison mental hospital almost probably for wrong reasons and who have fallen victim to a lawyer-like scam in our judiciary and in medical care. I have to reserve an interview time of 1,000 hours forward slash patient and travel costs and other necessary costs that I will have to pay for this from tax money, which should be the size of a fly's shit next to the Uniper mess. Or, on the other hand, you could hire me for YLE at the average salary of a journalist to investigate crimes committed by the authorities against their citizens. These patients should have the opportunity to meet according to the law, and nothing other than criminal activity is possible for the ownership of these patients on the condition that they are not allowed to be met by a person who suspects illegal actions towards them, so I want to meet them and this will not be circumvented with any lawyer gimmick where Anamaya Henriksen takes care as Minister of Justice. Medical Treatment for Mental Health Patients these people who suffer from depression in Finland, however, do not receive treatment when they are on the free side of our society, which is due to treatment cues generally advertised in the media, which have a median value of 137 days on the side of psychiatry, which means that for many problem citizens, they have time to die by their own hand before this imaginary treatment which doesn't really exist. But if we look at these cases of problem citizens in the larger and longer term of what psychiatry does in Finland, i.e. it makes mothers even kill their own children and murders reputable unwanted MP candidates in the political backyard of the European Commission Jutta Erpilainen, these suicides of problem citizens are almost 100% wanted end result by the side of the psychiatry and as with the murders of Jimmy Cartunin and Tuomas Trisviuari. These are not necessarily even suicides but perhaps a bacterial infection caused by a deliberate needle infection, from which psychiatric patients or victims die and of which I have personal experience, surprise surprise. Henrika Riponen, the doctor wife of the coalition politician and priest Pacey Riponen and by Pavey Koki when they didn't disinfect my finger when they took my CRP in 06 forward slash 2018, which caused me to have a fever that lasted for two days and felt bad, during which I had hot flashes from my toes to my head, which really looks like the symptoms of the high virus. 06 forward slash 2023 I have these chills every day, and in my eyes. The Finnish medical care does not seem to be doing anything but murdering its own people in the heat of the murderous politics of Saulini Inisto, the white king of the coalition. I will have my own video about the high virus starring Has Carlson from the University of Turku, who imitates the high virus in his own research and conclusions, but of course this activity leaves the elderly in Finland wondering if they are infected with which viruses because at least I constantly have a cold and shivers that the elderly certainly can't connect to the disease of homosexuals and drug users, which they can very well get with the deliberate actions of Henrika Riponen and Pavey Koch, 
which will take these elderly people to the grave faster than spending the money of Sorlini Inisto, the White King of the Coalition. These problem citizens of psychiatry clinics, as well as possibly the cause of death investigations of the elderly, with signs of illegal actions by doctors, their cause of death investigations are blessed by THL Sirkagbala, who blessed the murder of Tuomas Trasviwari by Ugandan pop men, and by the ideological descendants trained by Trohapala or Juha Rautaimo, who are certainly not be smart so it is possible to catch them in the future if manhunts against corrupt authorities are started in Finland. But as for Trohapala's team play statements that you can't solve anything alone, Minapass's abilities, which are completely unstoppable in their own class, should be good proof of this, whatever skill can be done if it's at the level top of and Trohapala could visit www.finishcrimereporter.com where I, I will tell it some hard facts. The articles I have made are based on criminal investigations messed up by the Finnish police, where apparently corruption plays a big role because what Hapala says in the news article is corruption and which requires the cooperation of several people where the Finnish police are extremely good and where the murder of Tuomas Trasviwari is an extremely good example of about the cooperation patterns of the health and welfare institution, central criminal police and the private arms manufacturer. Patria in the background of the Trasviwari murder, where of course ex-ministers of the coalition's murder policy are running. Back to medical treatment. The University of Turku which uses its own patients, such as the truck driver Jan Boyjaspoof, when it advertises the abuse of medicine and cancer treatments for problem citizens suffering from autumn depression, and the human rats of Han Yu Lauerman's institution, whose lives are shortened by decades, which is apparently quite a big saving in the coalition's White King's budget, even if some of these human rats serve Turku University's medical science for dementia and many other diseases. Whose real causes can be found in brain damage caused to patients chemically and with the help of electrical treatments, the effect of which is then investigated. Next, I will show what kind of learning and example material the University of Turku advertises about its own treatment methods which in reality are the abuse of medicine, which many problem citizens do not know how to question when it is advertised with the help of Wiley's propaganda machine because of the murderous policy of the white king of the coalition, Sorlini Inisto. Se on se, mikä nyt pitää mut ja hengissä. But after my second session, everything changed to me. Hoito oli hyvä kokemus Raulille, mutta mitenköhän rankalta hoito nykyään näyttää? Monella on vielä väärä käsitys hoidosta, jota ennen nimitettiin sähkö-shokkihoidoksi. Tässä on alle 30-vuotias potilas, jonka masennuksen lääkehoidot eivät ole tehonneet. Sähköhoitoon hän on tyytyväinen. Onko tämä hoito suunnilleen sama kaikille vai vaihtelee se tämä on, tapauksi? Joo, kyllä tämä on niin kuin, tosi yksilöllistä, että katsotaan niin kuin, ikä vaikuttaa ja sukupuoli jossain määrin ja sitten myöskin se etenkin elektrodiasettelun, että kuinka niin, jota, tehokasta hoitoa halutaan, niin voidaan sen puolesta muuttaa. Tämä on sellainen kevyt nukutus vai? Joo, sen verran, että potilaat nukahtaa ja todetaan, että potilaat varmasti on täysin rentoina ja sitten sen jälkeen annetaan tuo hoito. Sitten potilas nukkuu ja voidaan jo oikeastaan toimenpide okay. sitten antaa niin. ja sitten tulee hoito. Onko tämä tavallinen reaktio? Joo, kyllä. Et se on hyvin yksilöistä kuinka voimakkaasti Tällainen motorinen koudistus tapahtuu, mutta niin, jota, välillä on semmoinen, että ei, ei siihen pystytä niin kuin, täysin poistamaan sitä lihasen laksan tilaa, että pystytään niin kuin, pienentämään. At this point, I would like to say my own opinion about this treatment, 
which the nurse says that it is individual how the patients react to the spasms of the treatment, which cannot always be removed even with a muscle relaxant. This is not an individual and random reaction, but it is greatly influenced by how much voltage and volts are driven between the ears of these problem citizens and is completely dependent on how much damage is wanted to the brains of these patients with electrotherapy. This is the abuse of medicine and one part of the murderous policy of the white king of the coalition Solinianisto, which this black killing of problem citizens as a breeding ground of the University of Turku protects as the president of Finland, which of course ensures and enables the human rats of the researchers of the University of Turku in their research with the help of these imaginary diseases such as depression, which YLE and the University Hospital of Turku promote as a positive. From view. Nyt se alkaa tuota, elimistöstä loppumaan ja päässä vielä jatkuu hetken aikaa. Hoitaja annetaan semmoinen 8-12 kappaletta 2-3 kertaa viikossa. Sitten kun masennusoireet on vähentynyt huomattavasti, niin sen jälkeen voidaan sitten lopettaa hoito tai siirtyä ylläpitohoitoon. Mitä on sähköhoidon kriteerit? Minkälainen henkilö pitää olla kyseessä? No ehkä tärkein kriteeri on se, että potilas on itse halukas sähköhoitoon. Joo. Sellaiset potilaat, joiden kasvojen ilveet hiukan jähmettyy, joiden motoriikka hidastuu, niin he usein hyötyy sähköhoidosta. Taas vastakohtana voisi todeta, että tällaiset ahdistuneet potilaat saattaa pikemminkin hyötyä ketamidiohoidosta tai sarjamagnetistimulaatiohoidosta. Voidaanko sitä antaa myös pakkohoitona? Se on äärimmäisen harvinaista. No, tässä me ollaan tavattu Raul, joka tapaus on aika niin kuin kannustava tähän sähköhoitoon. Miten tavallista näin suuri ihme parantuminen on? No voi sanoa, että se on suhteellisen yleistä. Karkeasti arvioiden sähköhoito on noin kaksi kertaa tehokkaampaa kuin masennuslääkkeet. Tämän takia varsin yleistä, että potilas, joka ei ole hyötynyt masennuslääkkeistä, hän voi silti hyötyä sähköhoidosta. Mutta miksi se ei ole sitten yleisempää kuin se on? Sähköhoito edellyttää nukutuksen ja nukutukseen liittyy aina pieniä haittavaikutuksia ja riskejä. Ja sähköhoitoon noin toimenpiteenä liittyy muistia ja häiriöiden niin tota, esiintymistä. Kuinka tavallisia ne muistihäiriöt on? Suurimmalla osalla potilaita, ja tämä tarkoittaa yli 90 prosenttia, niin nämä muistihäiriöt ikään kuin alkaa siitä, kun sähköhoito aloitetaan ja tavallisesti ne loppuu kahden viikon kuluessa sen viimeisen sähköhoitokerran jälkeen. Joo, eli se ei tarkoita sitä, että on loppuikänsä lyhytkestoisen muistin ongelmia, vaan se liittyy nimenomaan tämän hoidon Joo, ajanjakso. nimenomaan tämä hoidon ajanjakso. Masetus tai muut sairaudet jo sinänsä aiheuttavat muistihäiriöitä, niin suurimmalla osalla potilaista kaksi viikkoa sähköhoidon päättymisen jälkeen muisti toimii itse asiassa paremmin kuin ennen sähköhoidon aloittamista. No, sähköhoidon määrähän on lisääntynyt valtavasti sanotaan viimeisen kymmenen vuoden aikana. Onko hoito itsessään kehittynyt? Nyt on opittu tällaisia elektrodien asettamiseen liittyviä pieniä konsteja, joiden avulla näitä muistia häiriöitä voidaan vähentää. Joo. Miten isona ongelmana sä itse koet sen, että te ei tiedetä tarkalleen, mikä on se mekanismi, jolla se toimii? No. Itse en koe tätä ongelmana, koska jos ollaan tarkkoja, niin me emme myöskään tiedä, millä tavalla masennuslääkkeet toimii ja millä tavalla psykoterapia toimii noin aivotasolla. Oletko kuitenkin sitä mieltä, että on hyvä, että on rinnalla terapia ja sitten on näitä muita hoitoja? Eli että se on semmoinen kokonaisuus? Olen, nimenomaan. Eli nämä ikään kuin voimistaa toisiaan, kun näitä käytetään samaan aikaan. This video material produced by Wiley's Propaganda Machine in cooperation with Turku University Hospital is made from a positive point of view, where helping patients is falsely benefited, even though these treatment methods actually destroy the brains and brain function of these human rats of the future, and there is a big question mark, 
how much Turku University's research on dementia, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's diseases relies on these human rats whose brains and their functions have been destroyed by purposeful action either with chemical compounds or electric current, which prepares these future human rats for use by researchers of various diseases. It is easy to believe this activity to people who do not know about medicine, because this dementia is, for example, very broadly defined, even among the general public, and the public cannot in any way connect dementia with intentionally caused brain damage, at least in front of the University of Turku and the externally advertised good intentions of medical care and the credibility of these institutions but which is a scam has grown so large that it is difficult to hide it alongside all the illegal activities that medical psychiatry does, at least in Finland, with problem citizens, some of whom it has decided to get rid of even by murdering them in medical care. A hospital that makes such misleading and false educational videos with the help of Wiley's propaganda machine for the eyes of the people only tells me how consistent the authorities of our country are when these Wiley educational videos do not arouse any resistance or that they are even allowed to be published in the media, which of course does it in the name of a free press, like all illegal ones the actions that the most ruthless beast on earth, the white man has done towards his own people, have at least been hidden under good intentions. It is a big question mark how much of this activity is aimed at free problem citizens in our society, who are not bound by any forced treatment but who have been duped by psychiatry and joined this activity, but it certainly affects our country's staged citizens in human rat farms and if we look at for example Nita Mintu Turkanen from who was a psychiatry and a problem citizen tricked by the police, who went along with the sex change party and the planning of the mass murder, it will certainly be difficult for him to live sanely in these institutions led by Han Yu Lauerman and Kari Ohala and it is only a matter of time before Turkanen consciously submits to the destruction of his brain, which, if necessary, lowers his intelligence to the level of a dog, that he after all, he is able to survive in these human rat farms, after which he is in a state of complete consent to Jarmo Hayatala and Walter Major Helena's illegal medical research as a medical human rat. Parkinson's Disease if we look at this activity carried out by the University of Turku, which operates completely without bureaucracy, even literally when it covers problem citizens as human rats for medicine against all laws, I can't help but see the symptoms of these diseases, such as Parkinson's disease, which Valtteri Kazinen is researching and the side effects of the drugs that Finnish medical care feeds to our country's problem citizens in the autumn day depression is a clear sign for me who in the field has taken Gerianio's drug trade on his own shoulders, whose mental muscles are at least the size of a medieval church and whose word cannot be questioned by any innocent human rat who has been caught in the clutches of these institutions, and how medical care has a strong desire to cure people of diseases that it is self-inflicted, just like the high virus which only works as self-justification to gain access to the human immune and nervous system, where medically non-existent and imaginary mental illnesses are in a class of their own. Valtteri Kazinen, who works as a professor at the University of Turku and a researcher in Mikhail Liluxen's Mihailainen, is too good a combination and a link to all the injustice that is happening in the field of medical care in Finland. Kazinen, who at least doesn't run out of sick patients in Finland, if you look at medical care in general, where it has even started murdering problem citizens who are considered surplus, who cannot fit in our country's mental hospitals, where mothers who are already married are taken, not caring a little about their children, whom these mothers murder, just like medical care, but with the difference that medical doctors are not caught in this activity in the country of Sorlini in Murder policy, 
and that they are in full strength of soul and body without the intoxicating chemical compounds that it feeds to family mothers who can then be bought cheaply from the corrupt courts of our country when they have murdered their own offspring. This, of course, makes them extremely suitable for the state's human rat business, because after something like this, no one can live undrugged except for Han Yu Laoma and Kari Ohala who actually enjoy the suffering of these patients, because I have not yet read in the news that either of these people have been caught after eating psychiatry's chemical compounds with their own prescriptions. Healthcare budget. In addition, when you look at the state budget, where does all this money go, which is nine times more than the Finnish police, or has medical care started to portray the police, i.e. stupid? that it does not need to tell and explain to the people the final destinations of the money from its own budgets, or how much this industry has been affected by Mikhail Lilius Mihailanen from a party whose activities have been blessed with the murderous policy of Saulini Inisto, the white king of the coalition, and how this industry is being driven down with the help of a self-inflicted labor shortage making healthcare a field that specializes in medical research conducted on humans, because that is the direction this industry is being taken, and at a fast pace if you ask me, even media mogul Antipapra hurling in with doomsday declarations on MTV3 News where he says that these problem citizens must be treated which is the new territorial conquest of Papra Herlin, Lilius and the White King of the coalition Saulini Inisto. Valtteri Kazinan and the entire University of Turku, which pushes medical research mainly in the propaganda mind where it believes in the existence of medically non-existent and imaginary diseases, publishes these illegal studies at such a speed on such a subject that it has no motive or reason based on their actions in medical care. Medical care that murders our country's problem citizens by disrupting vital functions as in the case of Jimmy Cartusen, and by causing intentional bacterial infections, the University of Turku has no reason to save the elderly from Parkinson's disease, which will take them to the grave faster. These are about the medical researchers' own academic careers and maybe something else that I don't see here yet, but it can't be anything other than financial gain in a country ruled by Saulini Inisto's murder policy. I will have my own video about this area, but I will only say here that it seems that some of these elderly people in Finland act in the same way as human rats for medicine, who are charged for their care home with the help of these diseases, in the name of which medical examinations are performed on them, just like the patients of the prison mental hospital. The best example of this activity is the case in Aino Nykope's book, where a Russian grandmother who was a dual citizen, was in a hospital where Nycope poisoned patients, in connection with which the old woman was said to have schizophrenia without being in a mental hospital, which makes me wonder how much of this disease the University of Turku has embraced there are so many different operating methods piled on top of it that it surely burdens the law department of the University of Turku as much as it does me as a criminal investigator. These diseases that the University of Turku studies, just like mental illnesses, do not seem to have natural birth mechanisms, but are instead brain damage caused by chemical compounds to different parts of the brain, which then cause different symptoms in the patients. Let me quickly say that in my criminal studies cancer is a natural disease that has not been created by man. If someone starts blaming me for the delusional disease studied by the University of Turku, which it uses on all human rats and other claims, regarding their treatment in the medical field and with other patients. The field of nursing where Mikhail Lilius Mihailanen has landed, it would seem that there is no shortage of nurses based on the budget, if this money is not dragged abroad with the help of large profits from business operations which is indeed very basic Mikhail Lilius, namely stealing from the taxpayers for the white king of the coalition Saulini Inisto, even though some have to starve to death in Finland in the face of this activity, which drives these problem citizens to extremely desperate 
acts drugged by psychiatry. If we look at the same financial salary of the leaders of Esperica, which is basically Mihailanen's Mikhail Lilius, media mogul anti-Papa Herlin and the coalition's white king Saulini Inisto, to take the money from elderly care to foreign tax havens, these elderly people have no other job than to be part of the coalition's brick and mortar business together with other problem citizens i.e. human rats which are used to study the consequences of self-inflicted brain damage in medical treatment and turn them into university-level supports in the sense of propaganda, which of course has been a good disguise all these years, but it is difficult to hide them in front of the Minapassi's abilities, which left the big and might Oli Isotalo the former CEO of the arms manufacturer Patria without an alibi and the white king of the coalition Saulini Inisto without blue clothes. The death of Canis. Lauma's actions based on the email, which were almost identical to other criminal authorities and decision makers in our country, such as Gerianio, Suvi Linden, and Anne Homeland who served as project manager for Finnish school murders in 2007 and 2008, that is, by denying all claims and withdrawing from the situation with explanations, I began to rake up the cases in our country where persons have been sentenced to mental hospitals and the death of Canis is a good example of this. Since medical care, especially the mental hospital business, sends so many signals about its illegal and unfair operation, I have taken into consideration suspicious judgments, such as those whose perpetrators appear anonymously and without a recognizable face in the news, whose court decisions I have ordered. The death of Canis, where the person was convicted of manslaughter, was found by the Health and Welfare Institution to be involuntary treatment which was based on the convict's previous psychiatric treatment period, where he had been forcibly taken using compulsory medical care laws, which is quite normal behavior in Finland, as in the case of Salo's man and his wife. Judgment sent by the Vasa Court of Appeal The Court of Appeal in Vasa has sent me a verdict for the death of Canis which was sent to a prison mental hospital with the statement of the health and welfare institution without charge, which in these cases means treatment against the will, and in these cases, of course, the treatment is a very motley set of different forms of torture carried out with the help of medicine when it comes to a medically non-existent and imaginary illness, such as electrotherapy which is used almost without Exception when it comes to a human rat from the University of Turku, whose brain activity is slowed down either electrically or chemically with the help of medical poisons, which for some may very well mean the level of intelligence of a dog when you look at the educational materials made by Wiley's propaganda machine and the documents for which it has hired one or another truck driver from Turku markets such as Jan Boyjaspoof. Who doesn't need to be told twice when you have to advertise Turku? University's abuse of medicine about depression related to your own cancer, in the name of which Finnish medical care feeds the problem citizens of our country drugs used in the treatment of cancer to problem citizens suffering from autumn depression. Of course, as a crime reporter, it is clear to me that Nazi Germany's atrocities against the Jews were justified with the help of a truck drivers like Jan Boyjaspoof, and former editor-in-chief of Kalajoka's Utility and deputy member of public opinion Hannah Pahaniami together with her brother Henry Virumaki which are very excited about the people's cleansing when it doesn't just affect themselves. Jarko Kalevi Lepinen who was sent to a mental hospital for Timo Ingelsuo's death without being blamed, who, based on psychiatric expert statements, heard voices, which in the context of these cases are equated with voices that guide the patient, and about which the court debated whether Lepinen was under the guidance of these voices when he assaulted Timo Ingelsuo, as a result of which he was left lying on the ground in December and died of cold. Lepinen who currently works as a personal trainer and gym entrepreneur in the Yelivayska and Kokola area through his own company Lepo Coaching, 
certainly leaves one wondering how illegal a business the mental hospital business run by the Finnish government's decision makers is, when some of these people are subjected to medical human rats without caring about bystander victims and some are released back into the free side of our society. Entrepreneurs If you look at Jarko Lepinen's pictures and what Dr. Laumer from the University of Turku says together with Mika Rautainen, i.e. there are no miracle cures, for some reason Jarko Lepinen has experienced a miracle cure because the doctors have released him from the mental hospital to the free side of our society where he currently works as an entrepreneur, which should to be completely impossible, once again to quote Han Yu Laumer, an expert in this field regarding these people who are controlled by these voices, which are very common in connection with the disease schizophrenia, which otherwise is a medically non-existent and imaginary disease if there are university-level studies by University of Turku researchers Jarmo Hayatala and Walter Major Helena beliefs that are carried out because these diseases are researched out of a strong desire to cure these patients, who are in reality the human rats of medicine and there will never be a cure for this disease or a cure for a disease that is based on a lie. The murder of Canis through the eyes of crime journalist Hanula. The killing of Canis, in all its incredibility, turns out to be a dirty game by the authorities in a democratic state of law, where democracy means unjust judgments carried out in the name of mass power, and a state of law to make the people believe lies and witch-hunting diseases because it is a case of death, which mainly raises doubts about our country's legal system, in a country where the largest drug business in Europe is run from the headquarters of the Finnish police, as well as medical care that subjugates problem citizens into medical human rats with the help of its laws, just like what was done with the Jews in Nazi Germany, with the help of the laws, of course, when they were sent to Auschwitz at the time for the use of medicine where the Jew hatred created by Hitler was of course utilized in a maximum way. Killing Canis who does not at all follow the usual procedure with our problem citizens, which means subjecting them to the use of medicine and locking them up for the rest of their lives in mental hospitals, which in reality are medical torture camps. Lepinen, if anything can be believed about the Finnish legal system has been sentenced to compulsory treatment for the death of another person because he heard voices, currently works as an entrepreneur on the free side of our society, it is at least an unfair action if we look at what happened to Jauni Kaupila when he burned down a church in connection with which no one even died. A store that is surely locked away in one of our country's mental hospitals subjected to the use of medicine as a human rat by researchers at the University of Turku. The slayer of Canis who has worked as an entrepreneur for two years after the slaying job means that he has experienced a miracle healing contrary to everything that Han Yu Laoma, who runs these institutions together with Mika Rautainen, leaks to the public. Of course, this case looks similar to Anne Eli Aura's case where the person convicted of the death of her own husband is also convicted of the sexual abuse of her own children, and it is a big question mark what the prosecutor and other state authorities have agreed with Lepinen, for example on the mental hospital side, when he works in the free part of our society as an entrepreneur without any conviction for the death of Timo Ingelsuo of which he was accused. If the case is viewed from the state's point of view, it needs these unprovoked judgments with which it creates a pathway based on previous judgments that are accepted by the people by their number, and the numbers of these judgments do not count as false judgments when it builds a credible pathway for problem citizens to the state's mental hospitals as a human rat for medicine, which seems to be a tough business. It is 100% clear that something has been agreed with Lepinen regarding this case which is not talked about and which is only known to a few people, such as Jarko Lepinen and is the main reason why he has experienced a miracle healing in these institutions which were only a transit for him to return to our society to the free side without a sentence for the death he was accused of. These state institutions 
from which the killer of Emelian Yeminen, for example, has tried to get out, however, without similar success to what happened to Lebanon, and I don't think that these problem citizens, who have something a little strange, will ever experience any healing in these institutions, instead they have been subjected to medical human rats by the researchers of the University of Turku under arbitrariness, which is based 100% on I feel diagnoses that have nothing to do with medicine other than to justify all illegalities in the field of medicine in the name of these imaginary diseases. Mika Rautanen and Assignments Abroad While making this video, I noticed how Mika Rautanen goes all the way to Nepal to teach these secrets of mental health problems, which, however, would seem to be medical abuse and subjecting problem citizens to medical human rats despite all the positive advertising behind the beautiful fake kids. I will discuss this topic briefly, which I will supplement in another video, but when you look at how these acts that shock society in the name of mental health problems, such as Sonacelan Pares and Andreas Lubitz's plane crash, have increased considerably in at least all democratic states where all of them have this mental hospital activity, which at least in Finland is Mihailainen's Mikhail Lilius, the business run by media mogul Papa Helrin and the white king of the coalition Saulini Inisto. And his graduating school, the University of Turku, which apparently takes its own operating methods abroad with the help of Mika Rautanen. This industry, which is led in Finland by Mikhail Lilius, anti-Papa Helrin and the white king of the coalition Saulini Inisto has no interest in saving anyone other than their own financial margins at the expense of the lives of problem citizens who are expensive to the state, which can clearly be seen from the operation of HUS Medical Care, which murdered Jimmy Cartunin as soon as there was entered a suitable opportunity, that was found to disturb Cartunin's vital functions during the post. Trauma Metabolic Reaction which produced results for this capitalist trio when Cartunin was medically murdered like a stray dog that is really approaching forced euthanasia for a person in a country where one has to live profitably for the state. Saulini Inisto whose authorities carry out illegal exterminations of problem citizens in favor of the white king Saulini Inisto's murderous policy. Deaths judged anonymously by medical care. Jarko Lepinen whose name or picture he could have been identified by, has not been released to the public by the media, I have investigated other cases in Finland where persons have been sentenced to a mental hospital for no reason without publishing their names or faces. Nurse without fault. The HUS hospital district, which I am familiar with from the murder of Jimmy Cartusen which was carried out by deliberately disrupting the post-trauma metabolic reaction by putting all the drug antibodies on Cartus because he was deliberately treated as a poisoned patient, which made possible this medicinal forced euthanasia, which has begun to be performed in Finnish medical care for problem citizens who are unprofitable by Saulini Inisto's murder policy, who unjustifiably eat the coalition's white the king's money. This activity has become strongly involved after the private medical care companies landed in Finland, the largest of which, Mihaili, is led by Mikhail Lilius, far beyond Finland's borders, who previously reorganized the Fortum coalition to benefit the White King, has now come to do the dirty work for Finnish medical care, which means the downfall of elderly services due to a self-inflicted labor shortage made possible by numerous private with the help of hospital giants and universities, from which at least the University of Turku runs a human rat business, and to create a process by means of which problem citizens have started to be murdered in medical care some of whom are tortured and punished with the help of medicine, which are hidden under imaginary diseases. If we take into account the work history of this nurse convicted without fault, who has worked all his life in HUS nursing care, this lack of guilt, which means completely lacking in understanding, he could not have worked in nursing care without this being noticed, but it is a completely wrong conviction 
just like Jark Kolepanen, who killed Canis with whom this pretext of being sent to a mental hospital turned out to be a get-out-of-jail-free card and who currently works as a gym entrepreneur. Since the nurse's name and face were not published, she is apparently already on the free side of our society, perhaps even as an entrepreneur who has experienced miraculous healings in these institutions where there should not be miraculous healings. Furthermore, if we look at this case from the patient's point of view, it seems to me that this is almost identical to the case of Ano Nicope, where the patient's death is deliberately caused, which is denied. This patient's death, which in my eyes only appears to be a deliberate act where the patient has been given the worst possible way to die, and I could even put my career as a crime journalist on the line that this was a deliberate act that may have punished this patient for some moral or criminal act for which this nurse has punished this patient. This operation, where the patient is transferred to home care, is the most ideal and most suitable place to carry out these punishment deaths, and if we look at how determined Jimmy Cartusen's murder was, moving these patients to home care can also be a systematic operation for some, where it is known that such a shocking death will be arranged in one's own home. Ano Nikope who said that he has done nothing wrong by poisoning his patients can be a statement that can be explained by reason, if Nikope only did what is done systematically in HUS nursing with a small group and as a group of nurses in a small nursing facility, which certainly cannot accept any blue-eyed girls who want to save of the earth because at least the state mental hospitals which are human rat farms of medicine and the site is certainly traumatizing where the actions approximate. Nazi Germany's Auschwitz in terms of medicinal torture. Muscular dystrophy disease. This patient, who suffered from muscular dystrophy, which is extremely rare, and who died under extremely suspicious circumstances in home care where the nurse was found innocent of the mental hospital whose actions are, to say the least, arbitrary and completely unpredictable, of course leaves the question to the medical side, whether this patient acted as a human rat of medicine, not in the mental hospital but in his own home, to which it has been extremely safe to feed just about any chemical compounds that cause this disease that does not normally occur in nature like cancer and that originates from medicine's own research when they have drilled into the secrets of the human nervous and immune system, tampering with which causes these extremely rare diseases that do not occur normally in nature. When these diseases have become a part of society, they can be quite credibly given to patients who are completely dependent on medical care with anonycopy-like actions by poisoning these elderly people with the strangest chemical compounds that cause the strangest diseases because they affect the complex human immune system. Of course, these cases flow into the false statistics of the University of Turku, which is then good to show the people how sick it is and blame them themselves for them which is quite normal in dictatorships, which modern medicine also represents. The woman died of a bacterial infection. The bacterial infection in Dystrakoski Hospital where the patient died is only more weight to my claims where media mogul anti-Papa Herlin with his own best capitalist friend Mikhail Lilius has come to make the coalition's white King Saulini Inisto's murderous policy true on the side of problem citizens which can be seen as medical deaths which are made possible in the name of accidents and as is the case with Jimmy Cartusen is premeditated murder. This case was investigated by a stupid group in Finland, and it has no competence whatsoever to take these cases to anything other than the unsolved file, whose competence consists of village rallies and donuts, which means at least submitting to the coalition's White King murder policy and doing what they get money from, i.e. blessing the dead in the new area of Nianisto's friend club bodies with accidents. This is reminiscent of the murder of Tuomas Trasviari in terms of explanations, which only shows how closely the private medical clinics of medical care work with the business world, where they both have explanations in connection with systematically arranged deaths. Medical Court 
In Finland, the impunity of the mental hospital has been outsourced to the health and welfare institution, whose coroner Serkakbala blessed the murder of Tuomas Trisviuari, which tells about the illegal operation of this institution, which the entire forensic psychiatric board represents. With the expert opinion made up of the members of this board, whose members have no contact with the defendants, the sending of these defendants, such as Jauni Kaupila, to a mental hospital without charge is done entirely on the basis of statements made by other psychiatrists, which completely falsely state that the patients hear voices that guide them, such as Jarko Kalevi Lepinen in the case which has turned out to be a 100% lie and he works in the free side of our society as a gym. Entrepreneur Lepinen, who opposed sending him to a mental hospital for no reason, proves that this dictator-like behavior cannot be fought in any way, but that this dictator-like process completely unjustifiably takes the accused's word for granted, which was quite normal in Nazi Germany, is now in Finland, which subjugates our country's problem citizens as medical human rats to the murderous policy of Sauli Nienisto, the white king of the coalition alongside where this human rat business of medicine also belongs. Jana Suvisarai, who is a member of the Board of Forensic Psychiatry, is also involved in studies published in the name of the University of Turku, in which the effect of various chemical compounds on the brain at the cellular level is studied in these human rats of medicine. The mechanisms of occurrence of medically non-existent and imaginary diseases are guessed, and previous guesses are refuted. In other words, Jana Suvisarai is herself sentencing these problem citizens to mental hospitals in the Forensic Psychiatric Board, which also appear in her studies, which is strange to say the least when you look at how unfairly and dictatorially these defendants are subjected to the use of medicine and forced treatment laws, that this action can have nothing to do with curing the patients, but using them in their own illegal research conducted on humans. In the future, there will be no criminals but mentally ill people. The Finnish authorities, who have taken a clear line with criminals, where they are identified before crimes, if necessary, covert activities are built around these citizens, the purpose of which is to get them to psychiatric clinics and to make their actions appear at least strange in the eyes of the citizens, and together with the false expert opinions of psychiatry. These problem citizens caught in the clutches of official corruption can be sent to imaginary in the name of diseases to mental hospitals as human rats of medicine. The photographer can clearly see a trend that supports the existence of this activity, not only in Finland but in all democratic states in whose motherland this activity has been developed, i.e. in the United States, which murdered its own president who was elected by the people. John F. Kennedy, whose video is about to be published by me. Company World and Sonna Selen Pa Since Selen Pa worked in very large international companies, a doubt inevitably arises, how closely does Han Yu Laoma SVTH's department work with cooperation with our country's companies? which as a medical human rat farm are under the protection of the murderous policy of Saulini Inisto, the white king of the coalition, just like the almost state-owned mobile phone company Nokia. This kind of activity is of course supported by the fact that one of VTH's directors, A.L.O. Jirilu, would like to create patterns of cooperation in our country's courts which I think is a completely outrageous corruption proposal in our rule of law state, which would lead our country to turning neurologically healthy prisoners into sick ones and transferring them to Turku University's human rat farms with the help of imaginary mental illnesses, under the whims of Jarmo Hayatala and Walter Major. Helena and forcing problem citizens to participate in illegal medical human experiments. These mental hospitals managed by the University of Turku where all laws can be stripped and overturned in the form of delusions characteristic of these diseases. Cooperation between the business world and psychiatry. 
Selling Power's case may be proof that connections to the business world have already been created in the 21st century, but based on an individual case, this statement represents more untruth than truth. The fact is, however, that psychiatric clinics produce these persons like Sona Selen Pa almost from an assembly line, who have revealed the core activity that it carries out behind the fake ads. The burnouts raging in our country at the moment seem to be the cooperation of the business world and psychiatry, which in itself does not lead to massacres like Selen Pa and offers companies to get rid of employees by mentally burdening the individuals they want and nobody in our country intervenes in this activity, and for the consequences of the action, medical care and the business world always blame the employees who have symptoms whose fault it is all and not the coalition's murderous policy, to which anti-Papa Herlin and Mikhail Lilius definitely belong. The consequences of the actions are piled on the necks of symptomatic employees who are just experiencing burnout just like psychiatry does with its slandered mental health patients, where the patient's reaction to unjust actions is turned into the patient's fault, but when antidepressants, also known as modern drugs, are added to this mix, then the burnouts are a little more violent and if it's go fine, only church are burned, because three good people died in the burnout of Imatra and that these people did not die in vain. This gang should definitely be caught by the psychiatric side, which the former editor-in-chief of Kalajoka's Utility Hannah Pahaniami also supports and care less about her colleagues who died in the deaths of Imatra. The illegal operation of psychiatry where people are chased by the authorities to the point where churches are burning down and people are being mobbed in markets. As the operation continues, Justice is distributed in the markets by condemning neurologically healthy citizens to mental illnesses that do not exist, just like there were no witches in the Middle Ages. In connection with Imatra's murder, the cooperation between psychiatry and the police can clearly be seen, where the police at least do not interfere with the operation of psychiatry, where hacker-level experts are already involved who got into Lassanen's computer to put a fake drug debt. This may have been done in some way on top of the internet browser, so the computer may not have had to be hacked, although this hardly matters when it comes to the Finnish police investigating these cases and it is a big question mark how big a group was involved in this case, because Lassanen messed up a bit like Sona Selen Pa, too, and in these cases it's not about any illness but cooperation involving the police, psychiatry and some others who have knowledge of computers. In connection with Lassanen's case, it is also clearly visible how this group builds activities around their victims, telling about them makes it seem strange to say the least, as Lassanen said that he saw his dead friend. Of course, this is not true, but is part of this staging process and if Lassanen had told about this in the psychiatric clinics, he might have gone straight to the state mental hospital with this statement without innocent victims. This action is of course wrong and it should be the responsibility of the police to ensure that no one is staged in mental hospitals, but what are you doing with the blue stupid group? Media mogul anti-Papa Herlin Finland's richest swindler or media mogul anti-Papa Herlin, who paid Juha Tarunin to keep quiet about the fake kidnapping so that Minna Nerminen could be bought the world's strongest alibi for his future crimes, is clearly involved in driving problem youth to psychiatric clinics, which is partly his, Lilius and the coalition's white king Saulini Inisto's new territorial conquest on the side of medicine where trade is conducted with problem citizens of Finland, which certainly suits Finland's richest bandit on the human trafficking side of medicine and his friends, one of whom owns Mihailainen, which offers medical services. Even though the business world and cone elevators advertise human rights on their fake ads, surprise surprise, from the mouth of Suzanne in S. Stubb the wife of the coalition's murder policy supporter Alexander Stubb. Alexander Stubb, 
who is in the European Union spreading the coalition's white King Saulini Inisto's murderous policy, but nothing more about him. This happy news from Ines Stubbs' mouth squeezed with cone elevator money is as thin as an election promise next to Papa Herlin's actions and full of bullshit when it comes to the truth anti from Papa Herlin's mouth, in the MTV3 news where he demands these problem citizens get access to treatment, which is the playground of the coalition's murder policy where Papa Herlin and Mikhail Lilius are participating in making money with the health and freedom of these problem citizens whom I am saving. However, without cone elevator money, with which, among other things, this illegal medical human trafficking is financed through the Cone Foundation, which distributes money to the University of Turku, whose experts have blessed Hannah Nermanen's medically non-existent and imaginary hypersensitivity to electricity, however with the difference that he doesn't have to live in these human rat farms like our country's staged problem citizens. Former Road Velho and Current Hald I have first-hand experience of the business world created by media mogul anti Papa Herlin and its operation when I worked at the former Road Velho and the current Hulled Engineering Office, which is a subcontractor of media mogul anti Papa Herlin's cone elevators in product development. Papa Herlin, who is extremely well known to me, not for his cone elevators but for the fake kidnapping of his own relative Minna Nerminen and by making it possible because this case was 100% a lie and a scam that bought Minna Nerminen the strongest alibi in the world, the position of the victim in view of her future crimes. The current Hulled supervisors and managers Ari Ratainen participated in smoking me out of the former Road Velho, this is a long battle of fatigue where one finally understands to give up. Nico Koselainen, a direct reply from the email of Miko Vale of Cone Elevators, it's bothering me, Tommy Manurjoki, he has mental health problems, remove him from job search lists, Mika Kiljala, this is not Rain's place to work. This hassle has been realized by Kohalataru Latin Maki and by Sweco's Henry Necht, both of whom have connections to hold Mika Kiljala. These actions by the Hulled bosses and the media mogul regarding the fake kidnapping of Papa Herlin's relative only supports that there is a good probability that an activity has been built around Sel and Pa, at least at the request of the business world, which includes Papa Herlin and his subcontractor companies, which at least breathe the same dirty atmosphere of working life from which unwanted employees can be driven to a state mental hospital. An unexplainable and motiveless act of sell and par. These victims of psychiatry are characterized by acts that shock society, just like Andreas Lubitz's plane crash, which is their last cry for help and defensive reaction against this official corruption, which attacks them from the side of medical psychiatry and the police, whose purpose is to get these problem citizens out of the free part of our society into state mental hospitals which in reality are medical concentration camps managed by the University of Turku, whose patients are subjected to the use of medicine by means of the laws of a democratic state, which yes, on the side of the problem citizens, means a dictatorship with hatred of the people and the power of the crowd, which is only dressed up in a more beautiful form for the sake of obfuscation, of course. This activity takes bystander victims, but it doesn't seem to bother psychiatry, for which these human rats of medicine are worth more than gold measured by weight and which it can buy cheaply from the corrupt courts of our country, which have been greased with media mogul anti Papa Herlin's cone elevator money and tested with fake kidnappings of their own relatives that it works. Drug research is completely dependent on motiveless killers because I have investigated this case as a private individual as well as the investigations of the extremely corrupt professors of the University of Turku, short-term functional outcome in psychotic patients. Results of the Turku Early Psychosis Study, TEPS, Elevated Serum Chemokin CCL22 Levels in First Episode Psychosis, Associations with Symptoms peripheral immune state and in vivo brain glial cell unction, 
which they perform in prison mental hospital patients with medically non-existent and imaginary mental illness. In my previous articles, I have dealt with the hot potato of medicine, i.e. brain research, which means the effect of chemical compounds on brain functions. Because these studies are completely based on experiments performed on humans, on which it is highly dependent, because these patients are completely at the center of the existence of these studies, the employment of researchers, the advancement of medicine and the employment of nursing staff. In other words, these patients are more valuable than gold to finish healthcare, the University of Turku and mental hospitals, because they act as natural resources of medicine and are, in other words, the black gold of medicine, which has become the property of the state. With little regard for bystander victims, which can clearly be seen from the actions of Ern Homeland, the project manager of the Finnish school killings, enables these school killings by buying a lot of public hatred towards this new minority group, which is used as fuel by the murderous policy of the white king of the coalition, Saulini Inisto. The basic premise of these medically non-existent diseases is of course that the masses believe in them just like witches did in the Middle Ages. If we look again at Selen Pares motives, which are not there. So why did this person shoot three complete strangers at random? The only one to whom this kind of motive fits the bill is Turku University professors Ekelund, Salakan Gas, Hayatala, Kakila, Carlson, Laoma and Jurila because they are completely dependent on these patients for their work research results and academic career. This area is also equally dependent on these innocent patients because they employ a lot of mental hospital nurses. The professors of the University of Turku, who try by all means, try to guess the mechanisms of origin of these medically non-existent diseases, which in reality are all manifestations of extreme corruption and staging as well as psychiatry's skill samples of psychological influence together with drug treatment. After the Selen Par case, it is not at all unclear that the Finnish people do not believe in these which hunted and medically non-existent mental illnesses, which guarantee the extremely corrupt professors of the University of Turku a salary, an academic career that can be boosted at the expense of the health, freedom and self-determination of these patients. University of Turku's Illegal Medical Studies If there were no mental hospitals in Finland, there would be no acts committed by mental health patients in our country, which are most likely operating processes developed by researchers at VTH and the University of Turku for patients, who, as a result of their actions, maintain the existence of mental hospitals and guarantee the payment of salaries of VTH staff act as a research resource for the University of Turku and the pharmaceutical industry as a natural resource. Of course, this Finnish mental hospital operation may possibly have even more extensive and multidimensional reasons, such as the patients provided for research by VTH and the University of Turku's school friends, the research carried out in the name of the University of Turku the drug product developments carried out under the guise of medically non-existent and staged mental illnesses, the end product of which the patients eat for the rest of their lives for a non-existent disease in the facilities where they are stored. It is absolutely important in order to make the above activity possible, that in Finland we know how to impose medically non-existent mental illnesses on people belonging to the most vulnerable social class so credibly that no one can question it and who would otherwise end up in prison in our country, where they are protected by the human rights laws created in society, unlike in Laoma's institutions where the laws are overturned as delusions as well as the fact that mental illnesses spread like the flu among the most disadvantaged, Selenpar is of course not included in this group, but since it is most likely staged and medically non-existent diseases, the reasons for including Selenpar in the scope of these services can be found in the next heading. Imaginary Delusions of Sona Selenpar 
When the brain activity of these victims of psychiatry can be brought down enough with medication, the person can no longer regulate their activities or be able to distinguish what is real and what is not, and this condition can be partly the reason for the introduction of schizophrenia, which is diagnosed by a doctor, a disease that is medically non-existent and imaginary. In addition, this drugging is very useful when these staged problem citizens go to court with a biased legal assistant on the government's salary like Heike Lampella, Carl Gummerus or Kari Uoti, the cases go exactly as the authorities want, or in the case of Finland as the white king of the coalition Saulini Inisto wants. In my eyes, Selen Pares delusions are nothing more than an illegal and misused cover-up operation by the police which has been caught in the staging of the perpetrators of the mass murder in Helsinki, by which this duo was drawn into criminal activity, and at the end of which they were arrested from the parking lot, practically guilty of no act. This same activity with problem citizens can clearly be seen in all democratic states, which of course scares me, how consistent the state's decision makers are with regard to them, but I will deal with this in another video. In England, there is a case almost similar to Selen Parr called Pietro Addis, who imagined that the FBI was chasing him in England. All that is needed around these cases is to organize a group that believes these problem citizens drugged by psychiatry some false shit, which is then put on paper where it looks extremely bad for these staged citizens which is nothing more than a police covert operation that it carries out behind fake it's. At this point Selenpa should be interrogated and set out to find out what happened, but there is a big question mark as to what her condition is like with this picture of the disease and possibly being medicated for 20 years.